Chapter 10 The Measure of Apostolic Authority Given to Paul by Christ 10.1-18 Paul's apostolic authority was given by the Lord. 10.1 Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent and bold toward you, too, but I beseech you, that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Now I, Paul, myself beg you by the obedience and gentleness of Christ, to willingly obey so I do not have to be bold when I am present with you. Some of you have low esteem for me in person, but considered me bold when I am absent from you. But I implore you in writing so that I will not have to be bold when I am present with you with that confidence, which I think to be bold against some. Some seem to think that we walk according to the flesh, according to our own selves. The body of Christ has held Paul in low esteem for nearly 2,000 years. Paul's confidence came from having seen the risen Lord and being commissioned by him to be his apostle, Acts 26 verses 16 to 18, Rom. 11 13, many at Corinth respected Paul's authority, but some followed false preachers. False preachers had crept in and were trying to move them away from following the sound doctrine Christ gave us through Paul. The enemy was trying to discredit Paul in the eyes of his followers and corrupt the word of God, 2 colon 7. Why did Paul have to defend his apostleship? Paul defended his apostleship in earnest because he is the only apostle to the body of Christ. The body of Christ that began in Acts 9 overlapped with Peter's group until Jesus Christ told Paul by revelation to go up to Jerusalem and to share the gospel Christ revealed to him and the fact that God had begun a new program. Paul received his office and message by direct revelation of Jesus Christ, not from the twelve apostles at Jerusalem, Gal. 1 colon 1, 11, 12. Paul went by revelation and communicated to them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, Gal. 2 colon 2, which is justification by faith, imputed righteousness, his spirit in the believer, that Christ had revealed to him. They finally understood why his wrath and coming were delayed, when they saw and perceived that Christ had given Paul a different gospel to preach, Gal. 2 colon 7 9, and a new dispensation formerly kept secret by God. Peter's group believed that Christ was their Messiah so they did not fall when the religious leaders of the nation of Israel fell by rejecting the Holy Ghost-filled little flock member, Stephen by stoning him to death in Acts 7. Between Acts 9 and Acts 15, people could be saved into either group depending on which gospel they believed. That gospel. That Paul preached among the Gentiles, Acts 13 verses 38 and 39, is justification by faith, Rom. 5 colon 1, God solved man's sin problem. In his great wisdom, God kept Paul's my gospel and the mystery secret. If Satan had known that the cross would allow the Father to give, or impute, his son's righteousness to two groups, Peter's kingdom on earth group, and Paul's group destined for heaven, Satan would not have allowed Jesus Christ to be crucified, 1 Cor. 2 colon 6-8, therefore, Peter's group, the Israel of God, Gal. 616, was on hold, their program was suspended and temporarily interrupted. After the Jerusalem Council, Acts 15 verses 1 to 29, Paul's gospel is the only gospel by which anyone is saved, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4, Gal. 1 colon 6 9, our entire dispensation and rapture was a mystery until Christ revealed it to Paul. After we are caught up, 1 Thess. Verse 17, then Peter's group will resume and continue to pick up more little flock members, Luke 12 verse 32, to be in God's kingdom of priests to the Gentiles in prophecy, Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6, 1 Peter 2 verse 9, dot. 3 For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, 4 For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds winky face. 5 Casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 6 And having inner readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience is fulfilled. For though we live in mortal bodies, our warfare is not physical, but spiritual, and our spiritual weapons are mighty through God to pull down Satan's strongholds. The strongholds in Corinth was human wisdom and false religious teaching by law-keeping Hebrews, 2 Cor. 11.22, Paul wants them to take captive every thought that does not line up with Pauline doctrine. We cast down any thought that exalts itself against Christ according the revelation of the mystery. 
Today, Satan's strongholds are mixing Peter and Paul, or following Peter instead of just Paul, Colossians 2 verse 8. We walk by faith in God's word to us through Paul and not according to what we or another person think or imagine. The King James Bible rightly divided and spiritually understood and believed is a powerful weapon against Satan's lies. Our three offensive weapons for spiritual warfare are, one, the Spirit of the Lord which is His might in us, two, the Word of God rightly divided, three, and prayer, f. 6, 10, 17, 18. Some strongholds of Satan at Corinth needed to be cast down. Satan was making the false ministers imagine that what they were teaching and doing was right. Just like Satan, they were exalting themselves against what Christ in his ministry from heaven was doing for the true church, the body of Christ, through Paul. When we bring our own thoughts captive in obedience to what Christ says in his word to us through Paul, then every thought or word that is contrary to that can be revenged or punished, thrown out, and destroyed. To not believe that Paul is the apostle to us in the body of Christ, and that Romans to Philemon is written for our edification, is to not believe Jesus Christ and to have vain imaginations. When we believe Paul is the one apostle appointed by Christ and that Christ is forming the one new man, f. 2.15, for heaven then we take every thought captive to what Christ is saying in his word. His spirit in us using his word rightly divided can cast down man's religion, imagination, and philosophy that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, the truth. We should shun profane and vain babblings, 2 Tim 2.16, God is who he says he is and works according to his purpose, not what a man's own spirit says, thinks, or dreams. Like a fire or hammer, his word destroys lies, Ja 23.16, 17, 25 to 31, Ezek. 13 colon 1 3, the largest denomination today is that of the ignorant brethren, we used to be one of them. They teach that the body of Christ began on Pentecost and mixed Peter's earthly ministry with Paul's heavenly ministry. If we believe that the body of Christ began on Pentecost, then we put ourselves under the law. The law activates our sinful flesh, Rom. 7 colon 9, in prophecy, Christ came to save Israel first so they could be a nation of priests and save Gentiles, Rom. 15 colon 8, 9, Gal. 4 colon 4, 5. Peter's hope is on earth, 1 Peter 1 verse 13. But, in mystery we are under grace, Rom. 6 14, motivated by his love, 5 14, our hope is heaven. Grace is all that God is able to do because of the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary. In the next dispensation, tribulation, it will be wrong to follow Paul. 7. Do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ's, let him of himself think this again, that, as he is Christ's, even so are we Christ's. Paul asked the Corinthians, Are you looking at the outward appearances? 5.12 the slick, smooth, and handsome Hebrew ministers spoke impeccable Greek and sounded convincing as they tried to move the Corinthians away from Paul's sound doctrine. The false little flock Hebrew ministers claimed to be in Christ, but they were enemies of the cross, who mind earthly things, Phil. 318, 19, because they were teaching something that God was no longer doing. They refused to recognize God's dispensational shift and new apostle. Paul said if he is Christ's let him understand that we are also Christ's. Who is a false minister? Someone who is teaching that the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ pertains to the body of Christ is a false minister. If a person does not rightly divide the word of truth, 2 Tim 2.15, they may not know that they are being used by Satan to spread a biblical, yet false gospel. We need to be both biblical and dispensational. 8 For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification, and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. Paul said For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority which the Lord gave us, when you understand the truth our letters will benefit you not terrify you. Christ's true apostles of the Gentiles, Rom. 11.13 And his assistants, 1 Thess. 2 colon 6 Are appointed for the edification of the believers, not for their destruction. Paul is the master builder of the body of Christ in the dispensation of grace and his foundation is Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, 1 Cor. 3 colon 10 dash 12, Rom. 16 25, F. 3 colon 1 dash 9, 
We also need to be careful that we speak for the purpose of edification and not destruction. We need to carefully choose when we speak, what we say, and how we say it. 9. That I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. 10. For his letters, say they, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Paul lets them know that he is aware of what some people said about him. They said, his letters are forceful and convincing but, in person, he is not very impressive and the way he speaks is contemptible, 11 colon 6, 1 cor, 2 colon 1, 4. Perhaps Paul's Greek was not refined. Behind their personal slurs of him was an attack on Christ's doctrine so. He met their slander straight on. Paul's appearance was affected and his body were marks of the Lord Jesus, Gal. 617.11 Let such an one think this, that, such as we are in word by letters when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. Paul warns those who think these things about them. The bold way Paul is when absent is the way he will be in person when he is with them. He will back up his letter of reproof with action when he visits. 12 For we dare not make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves, and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. Paul says with a little sarcasm we do not dare to be counted among you or to compare ourselves with those men who recommend themselves. They were glorying in men, 1 Cor, 321, and comparing themselves with each other, which is not wise. We need to check everything that is taught to see if it lines up with what God's word says, not man's imagination. If someone makes a claim, we want them to point to the verse. 13. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. But we will not boast ourselves beyond what Christ has given us to do. But ministering to you Corinthians is part of our assignment, the measure God distributed to us. 14. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reached not unto you, for we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ gave Paul an all-man ministry, Acts 17 verses 30 and 31, 1 Tim. 2 colon 4. Paul wrote, For obedience to the faith among all nations, Rom. 1 colon 5. He said, We are not going to stretch ourselves beyond our power of authority which God has given us, nor say that you are not our responsibility. You are our responsibility because our preaching extended to giving you the gospel of Christ. Paul was the first to preach the gospel at Corinth, Acts 18 verses 1 to 17, and he has been concerned about their spiritual growth ever since. The problem in 1 Corinthians was following the human wisdom which Athens was so famous for, 1 Cor. For 15, therefore, they failed to grow spiritually and remained babes and they were carnal because they splintered into denominations, 1 Cor. 112. 1437-38. In 2 Corinthians, the problem was similar to the Galatian error, listening to Hebrew ministers who mixed Peter and Paul. These errors are all corrected by believing what Christ said through Paul, 1 Cor. 11 colon 1, dot, 15 not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope, when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly, 16 to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. Paul is not going to boast outside of what Christ has given them to do, without our measure. Measure in the context is their assignment, or territory. Paul did not build on Peter's foundation because Christ gave Paul a different foundation, 1 Cor. 3 colon 10-12. Those Hebrew ministers at Corinth were out of bounds, they were preaching Christ's earthly ministry when that was not what Christ was doing then, or now. The false ministers had encroached on Paul's territory and were trying to mix Christ's heavenly ministry with his earthly ministry. Paul hopes that the Corinthians' hearts of love will be enlarged to our rule, teaching, abundantly when they wholeheartedly recognize that Christ made him his apostle and dispenser of the instructions to his heaven-bound group, that you would desire to support and spread the truth of the mystery. Paul wants them to participate in the work of preaching the gospel. We follow what Christ told us through Paul. Paul said, Yeah, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation, Peter's, Rom. 1520. Paul was not going to preach to the Jews that were already saved into Peter's kingdom on earth group. 
Paul found plenty of lost, unbelieving Jews in the synagogues. The Hebrew legalists had invaded Paul's territory and were trying to take over the church he had founded. Do you know of anyone who is preaching Christ's earthly ministry instead of his heavenly ministry? Then mark, name, and avoid them, Rom. 16, 17, 18. 17, but he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. 18, for not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. Let him who glories, glory in the Lord. For not him that recommends his own preaching is approved, but he who the Lord commends. We need to seek to be approved by God, not men. 2 Tim 2.15 Big congregations do not impress God. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. 1 Tim 6.5 Paul said, Judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. 1 Cor 4 colon 5 At the judgment seat for service, we will find out the truth. Christ works through the true believers according to his purpose. After our rapture, God will restart his program with Israel where he left off in Acts 15 and help the kingdom saints through the tribulation and into the kingdom on earth. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 17 But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Chapter 11 Godly Jealousy, Warning of False Teachers, Boasting in the Lord 11 colon 1, 2 Godly Jealousy over the Church. 11 colon 3 dash 15 Warning against False Ministers in the Church. 11 colon 16 dash 33 Paul suffered for Christ and for his church. 11 colon 1 Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. Paul is building toward the climax of this forceful letter. I wish to God you could put up with me while I indulge in a little foolishness. 2 For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Envy is wanting what belongs to someone else. Jealousy is wanting to hold on to what is rightfully yours out of love. A virgin is a woman who has not known another man. Paul wants to present the church as a pure virgin to Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, Rom. 1625, God was jealous, Exodus 20 verse 5, Deuteronomy. 424, he does not want the Corinthians fornicating with false ministers, but to be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ, 1 Cor. 11 colon 1, Paul uses the marriage analogy in Romans 7 verses 1 to 4, Ephesians 5 verses 25 to 31, here, and in Romans 8 verse 17 like a spouse, the body of Christ is joined heirs with Christ. The term bride of Christ is not in the Bible, but Israel's new Jerusalem is called the bride, the lamb's wife, Revelation 21 verses 2 and 9. Adam and Eve were to reign over the earth as co-monarchs, Genesis 1 verse 28, but they failed, so now Jesus Christ will rule it with Israel. But it was a mystery that Jesus Christ will rule with the body of Christ in the heavenly places, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, without blemish. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church, f. 5 colon 27-32. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit, one core. 617, we are spiritually joined with Christ, just like Eve was made of Adam's bone, Genesis 2 verse 23. 3 But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. But I fear, lest by any means as the serpent, Satan, beguiled Eve through his subtility, craftiness, so your minds should be corrupted, seduced, from the simplicity that is in Christ. Paul warns about the battle for their minds. The simplicity that is in Christ is that Christ did everything to you save us. Do you know that no one can come before the Father without the righteousness of Jesus? As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one, Rom. 310. What we need is righteousness. But no one can be righteous because our very DNA is corrupted by the sin nature we inherited from Adam and then we added our own sin on top of that. Rom. 5.12 In the first five chapters of Romans Paul clearly explained how God solved the sin problem. 
God is dispensing grace today and the Father will give any sinner his son's righteousness when we believe the gospel, Rom. 3 colon 21 dash 26, 4 colon 3, 24, 25, 5 colon 1. The gospel is how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, 2 Cor. 521, we only put our faith in what he has already done. We are justified by faith in Christ alone plus nothing. Salvation is 100% what God has done and 0% what man has done. Once saved, always saved. But if we add any of our work of our own to Christ's finished work on Calvary, we insult God and nullify our salvation, make it void of none effect, Rom. For 14, we cannot add our water baptism, sinner's prayer, public confession, good works, or anything else to what Christ has done, because if we add anything to the Son's finished work, then we pervert the gospel and are disqualified from being saved. God did not reveal the solution until after he saved Paul on the road to Damascus in Acts 9. 17 years later, Christ told Paul to go to Jerusalem. I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, Gal. 2 colon 2, Acts 13 verses 38 and 39. It was then that James, Cephas, Peter and Aramaic, and John saw and perceived that by one cross Christ saved two groups to put his spirit in them, Peter's to live on earth, and Paul's to live in heaven, Gal. 2 colon 7-9. Peter's group believes in the name of the Son of the living God and his sacrifice for sins, John 20 verse 31, Acts 4 verse 12, Heb 10 19, 29, 1 Peter 1 verses 14 to 21, but must add works such as water baptism, Exodus 30 verse 21, for salvation to identify with the little flock to be his kingdom of priests, Mark 16 verse 16. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. James 2 verse 24 They receive their eternal bodies after his second coming and will be a holy nation under the new covenant to evangelize the Gentiles in prophecy Isaac. 36 colon 24 dash 28, Luke 12 verse 32, ISA. 60 colon 1 dash 3 Jesus Christ is not only the Redeemer for Israel, but he is their Messiah, their king priest to rule from Jerusalem. But now, Jesus Christ is the head, F. 122, 23, of the body of Christ which God is forming during mystery when he is dispensing grace, F. 3 colon 1 dash 9. The Son's death and resurrection allows the Father to impute his Son's righteousness to two groups and to resurrect both groups, one at the rapture, one thus. For 16, 17, and the other at his second coming, Luke 6 verse 1, Dan. 12 colon 1 dash 3, Matt. 2400 hours 28, 29, and to reclaim heaven and earth. After the Jerusalem Council, Acts 15 verses 1 to 29, Gal. 2, the only valid gospel was Paul's, Gal. 1 colon 6 dash 9, Paul warns the Corinthians that devious, ignorant, false apostles have come into their assembly who mix what the Hebrews must believe and do to enter the kingdom on earth with his instructions to Christ's heavenly group. For nearly the past 2,000 years Satan has used this mixing strategy to successfully beguile most members in the body of Christ. Satan has even convinced many that Hebrews was written to the body of Christ, when it was obviously written by a little flock member who heard Peter preach on or after Pentecost, Heb. 2 colon 3, 4. Hebrews to Revelation are the letters that will help more of Peter's group, the little flock, through the tribulation and into the kingdom on earth after our rapture. Romans to Philemon are to the body of Christ. Peter was in Christ, but not in the body of Christ. In the future, Christ will gather both realms into one, F. 1 colon 9, 10, dot. For for if he, false minister, that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Paul says, For if someone comes to you and preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, such as Christ in his earthly ministry to Israel, not his heavenly ministry, 
or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, legalism, not grace, or another gospel which you have not accepted, such as the gospel of the kingdom, not the gospel of Christ, you may well put up with him. John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, and the twelve apostles preached gospel, repent, the name of the king, and be baptized, Matt. 3 2, 4 17, 10 7, Acts 2 verse 38. Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness among the people. Matt 4.23 Why did Jesus heal? It was a sign that he was able to heal the entire nation, ISA. 35.5.6 Because a priest could not have a blemish. No man that hath a blemish of the seed of Aaron the priest shall come nigh to offer the offerings of the Lord. Leviticus 21 verse 21 God said, If ye will, keep my covenant, then ye shall be, unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation, Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6. After his passion Jesus was seen by the twelve for forty days and spoke to them of things pertaining to the kingdom of God, Acts 1 verse 3. The twelve asked, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Acts 1 verse 6. But the mystery given to Paul has postponed Israel's program until after our rapture, Gal. 2 colon 7 dash 9, Rom. 11 colon 11 dash 25. Sadly, Paul's worst fear was realized even during his lifetime, he wrote all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, 2 Tim. 1 15. But before he was executed Paul wrote, I know God can keep the doctrine I have committed to him, 2 Tim. 1 12. 5 For I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chiefest apostles. I am not inferior to the very chiefest apostles, the twelve. Dot. 6 But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. My Greek may be unrefined, but not my knowledge for we have made our message completely clear to you in all things. 7 Have I committed an offense in abasing myself that ye might be exalted, because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely? Have I done wrong in lowering myself so that you may be exalted, since I preached the gospel to you for free? Some were saying, Paul is not a legitimate apostle or he would have accepted money for his services. He supported himself, so the gospel of God would not be hindered, 1 Cor. 9 12, and still his critics found fault. 8 I robbed other churches, taking wages of them, to do you service. 9 And when I was present with you, and wanted, I was chargeable to no man, for that which was lacking to me the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied, and in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so will I keep myself. I took the money supplied by other churches, receiving wages of them, so I could serve you. When I was with you and in need of provisions, I did not ask any of you to help me, for the brothers which came from Macedonia supplemented my income. I have kept myself from being a burden to you, and planned to stay that way. 10 As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of. This boasting in the regions of Achaia. 11 Wherefore? Because I love you not, God knoweth. As the truth of Christ is in me, no man can stop me from boasting that I serve the regions of Achaia without charge. Why was I not a burden to you? Was it because I don't love you? God knows that I love you. 12. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. But I did what I did that I may cut off any opportunity for some to say I did it for the money. If others brag they can be found even as we serving for free, working to provide for themselves, teaching what we teach, and suffering what we suffered. 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. They masquerade and pretend to have Christ's authority, but are fake counterfeits, not true messengers with Christ's true message for his heavenly people. And no wonder, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Satan uses many false ministers that corrupt and twist the word of God, 217. Today many pastors and teachers will tell stories with a grain of truth without being able to compare and contrast prophecy and mystery. 
they teach things that belong to Israel not to the body of Christ, or mix Peter's and Paul's messages. True ministers are Pauline, 1 Cor, 4 16, 17. Paul openly accuses those Hebrew ministers of being servants of Satan. Satan appeared as an angel to Eve and made her question, doubt, God and his word in the Garden of Eden, Genesis 3 verse 1. Like God, Adam and Eve had been clothed in light, PSA, 104 colon 1, 2. Satan was called Lucifer, ISA, 14 12, or light bearer. The NIV omits Lucifer and calls him Morning Star which is a reference to Christ, Revelation 22 verse 16. The NKJV calls him Lucifer but has a footnote to Day Star which is a name for Christ, 2 Peter 1 verse 19. Isn't it interesting that Satan who wants to be like the Most High, ISA, 14 colon 12 14, would make the counterfeit Bibles say he is? Satan was created perfect, wise, and beautiful until evil was found in him, Isaac. 28 colon 7, 11 to 19. Lucifer was the anointed cherub that covereth, perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee, Isaac. 28 colon 14a, 15. He convinced a third of the angels to follow him, promising them positions of power, Revelation 12 verse 4. 15 Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So it is not a great surprise if Satan's ministers are also transformed into counterfeit ministers of righteousness. God will judge them according to their works, Revelation 20 verse 12. Many ministers will be surprised to learn that they were actually used by Satan to teach a false gospel, Phil. 319, Satan's ministers are not only in the pulpit preaching false mixed up doctrine but also in the business of producing counterfeit Bibles. 16 I say again, let no man think me a fool, if otherwise, yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. I say again that I do not want anyone to think of me as a fool but if you do, then receive me that way, and allow me to boast a little. A fool applauds himself, but we will find out that Paul's wounds are his badges of authentication. Paul did all things so we could believe the truth of the mystery which was committed to his trust and he knew God was able to keep it and he has in the true Bible, 2 Tim, 1 11, 12. 17 That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly, in this confidence of boasting. What I am about to say I am not speaking by the command of Jesus, but I am boasting foolishly in the confidence of the office he has permitted me. 18 Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. Many gloried in appearance, so I will also. 512. Glorying in oneself is foolish, when it is Christ who has done it all. 19 For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. You gladly tolerate fools, since you are so wise. Sarcasm because they were not wise. 20 For ye suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. Someone can come into your assembly and do five things to draw them away from following Paul to follow Christ. 1. Put you under bondage, the law, gal. For colon 9, 2. Devour you to eat up who you are by grace in Christ with legalism, gal. 515, 3. Take of you, take your money, 4. Exalts himself claims divine authority, 5. Smite you on the cheek, physically punish you, slap you with the law, or shut your mouth from speaking the truth. They will take that kind of abuse from false ministers. 21. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. Howbeit whereinsoever any is bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold also. I am reluctant to speak, but you compel me to be bold. The false apostles are bold in usurping Paul's authority. Paul proves that he was not weak, only a true apostle would go through what he had. 22. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. They were Hebrews like Paul, but who were they? They were from the little flock, Luke 12 verse 32, that believed the gospel of the kingdom even after that gospel was no longer valid, Acts 15 verses 1 and 24, 21 20, Gal. 2 colon 7 dash 9, and refused to recognize Paul's distinctive ministry from Christ or to believe that their ministry had been put on hold. 
Today, many preach a gospel that is no longer valid. Paul wrote his letter to the Galatians from Antioch right after the Jerusalem Council, Acts 15 verse 30, and said twice that if anyone preaches another gospel than the one he preached, let him be accursed, Gal. 1 colon 6-9, when God repeats himself, we better listen. 23. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more, in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Paul speaks as a fool because those other ministers preach another Jesus, but said henceforth we do not know Christ after his ministry on earth in the flesh. 516. The false ministers were not teaching what Christ is doing now and were not appointed by him. Paul glories in those things he suffered without and then things within, Gal. 617, Christ had said that he would suffer for him, Acts 9 verses 15 and 16. Paul labored more abundantly than the 12, 1 Cor. 1510, in imprisonments, stripes, Acts 16, and he often nearly died. 24 of the Jews five times received I forty stripes save one. 25 thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep, 26 in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, 27 in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, he had to go without food, in cold and nakedness. 28. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. No wonder that Paul was bodily a little weak, he endured 195 stripes. None of the false ministers could say they endured as much as Paul out of love for Christ and the church. Besides physical sufferings, he had the internal care of all the churches. Paul prayed for them to thrive, wrote letters, sent ministers, encouraged them to appoint leaders, and visited when he could. His method was to enter a city, preach the gospel, set up churches, teach them his word, and appoint leaders. 29. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is offended, and I burn not? Paul had to deal with his own outrage. He was offended that some at Corinth continued listening to false apostles rather than to him after he told them not to. He was not jealous of their affection for himself, but for Christ and his church. Our great apostle would not have mentioned his sufferings at all if he wasn't defending the gospel. We will also suffer persecution, 2 Tim 3.12. It hurts Christ who loves us if we follow false ministers. Ministers can only teach the truth of God's word if they are rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Tim 2.15. 30. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. If I am going to glory, then I will glory in my sufferings. 31. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. God knows I do not lie. Paul brings their attention back to God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the true apostle. It comforts Paul and Christ if we follow his chosen minister. If we do not follow Paul to follow Christ, then we are not following Christ. The way to love Jesus is to believe what he told us through his one apostle to the Gentiles, Paul. The twelve apostles will sit on twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes on earth, Matt. 1928, in mystery, both Jews and Gentiles are baptized by the Spirit into one body, one core. 1213. 32. In Damascus, the governor under Aretas, the king kept the city of the Damascenes with a garrison, desirous to apprehend me. 33. And through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. Paul even suffered as a hunted man in Damascus, but he escaped the soldiers in a basket and slipped through their hands. Acts 9 verses 23 to 25. 2 Corinthians 11 verses 3 to 4 KJB. 3. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For for if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. JSP. Notice the skull rock formation. Calvary means skull.
Chapter 12 Further Proof of Paul's Apostolic Authority 12.1-6 Paul's Visions and Revelations from Christ 12.7-10 His Thorn in the Flesh and Christ's Sufficient Grace 12.11-18 His Signs of an Apostle 12.19-21 His Love and Courage to Deal with the Problems in the Church 12.1 It is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. 2. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth winky face such an one caught up to the third heaven. 3. And I knew such a man, whether in the body, or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth winky face. For how that he was caught up into paradise, and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Five of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. Six for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. Without a doubt it is not advantageous for me to glory, I will continue to come to visions and revelations of the Lord, Acts 26 colon 16, 22 21, 1 Cor. 1437, I knew a man in Christ more than 14 years ago, I cannot tell whether I was in the body or out of the body, God knows. I knew such a man, I cannot tell whether I was in the body or out of the body, God knows. Paul's soul and spirit without his body still seem to have real substance. Paul speaks in the third person because he does not want to bring glory to himself. Paul's inward man, for 16, his soul and spirit, was caught up into paradise and Paul heard words which were not lawful, allowed, to be spoken since they are not part of what we need to know here on earth right now. God has said all the instructions that two groups of believers need to know in his word. Paradise is mentioned three times in the Bible, Luke 23 verse 43, 12 verse 4, Revelation 2 verse 7. The soul does not sleep, the body does, Luke 16 verses 19 to 31, 1 Thess. For 13, however, we can draw a parallel with Israel's program and when we have our glorified bodies it will seem as if we all arrived at the JSOC together, 414, Heb, 1140, Christ triumphed over Satan who had taken the saints captive and delivered them from his clutches, ISA. 49 colon 24, Colossians 2 verse 15. The saints in the paradise compartment of hell, Abraham's bosom, were taken up to the third heaven after the sun's resurrection, ROM. 325 F. 4 colon 8, Heb. 12 23. Of such a man, that is justified, will I glory, yet in myself, I will not glory but in my infirmities. Paul will not glory in himself when it was Christ who did everything to save a blasphemer like him that participated in the brutal murder of Stephen and other little flock believers, Acts 8 colon 1, 9 colon 1, 1 Tim, 1 colon 11 dash 16. For though my flesh would desire to glory or brag about that experience, I shall not be a fool. I will speak the truth, but now I hesitate, lest any man should think of me above that which he sees or hears of me. I do not want anyone to idolize me in any way. This event coincides with the time that Paul was stoned, like Stephen, left for dead, and dragged out of the city of Lystra, Acts 14 verses 19 and 20. Paul died, his soul, and spirit, departed from him, Genesis 35 verse 18. After the list of all he endured in chapter 11, the last thing Paul glories in is being stoned to death and going to the third heaven, discovering that paradise was there, and returning to life on earth. It is remarkable that Paul waited for 14 years to carefully share what Christ allowed him to experience in his writings. Most people would have mentioned an extraordinary event like this to many people, many times. 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure to keep me from becoming prideful in my own sight or in the sight of others as a result of the abundance of revelations that I received by reason of the office Christ gave me the Lord allowed a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. The thorn was a painful continual reminder not to exalt myself above my office as your apostle, but Satan used it to pummel me, Acts 26 verse 16, Rom. 11 13, 8 for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. 
For this thing, Paul does not tell us what the thorn was. I asked the Lord three times to please remove it, not him, from me. Paul was healed from being blinded on the road to Damascus, Acts 9 verses 9 and 17, but his eyes may have been affected when he was stoned at Lystra. Paul said he wrote Galatians with big letters and that the Galatians were sympathetic about his eye problem, Gal. 4.15, 6.11. Perhaps Paul did not tell us specifically what the thorn was because many deal with different physical ailments, thorns in the flesh. 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And he said unto me, Paul heard the Lord speak to him again, My grace is sufficient because my strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul immediately cheerfully obeyed saying, Most gladly therefore I glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me, for colon 7-11, 15 18 When Paul is weak, he has to depend on Christ's spirit in him relying on his word. Faith is believing what God said. Paul prayed three times to be healed from the thorn, but God did not heal him. Paul prayed for Epaphroditus to be healed and he recovered. Phil. 2 colon 25-27 God is not supernaturally healing, He is working spiritually today, but He has given us bodies that are fearfully and wonderfully made, PSA. 139,14, and God comforts us through tribulation, ROM. 5,3-5, our healing will be at the rapture, and Israel's at His second coming. 10 Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong. Therefore, I take pleasure in physical hardships, being reproached by men, having needs, being persecuted, being in distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak in myself, then am I strong in him. When I am weak I am forced to depend on Christ to strengthen me as I walk by faith in his word, and not on myself. Phil. 4.13. 11 I am become a fool in glorying, ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you, for in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. I am become a fool in glorying, you have forced me to enumerate the things I endured, for I ought to have been commended by you. You should have exalted the office Christ gave me and stood up for what he said to you through me, instead of being enticed to follow someone else. For I am not less in any way to apostles Peter and John, though I be nothing in myself. 12 Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs, and wonders, and mighty deeds. Truly, the signs that proved I am an apostle were done among you by me in all patience, in signs, and wonders, and mighty deeds. Paul validated his apostleship to them just as Jesus proved to Israel that he was their Messiah. All the signs that Peter did, Paul did also to confirm that God was now working through him instead of Peter. Paul had all the spiritual gifts and spoke in tongues, 1 Cor. 1418, when he traveled around the Roman Empire he needed to speak several languages to share the gospel. Peter healed a lame man, Acts 3, Paul healed a lame man, Acts 14. Peter rebuked Simon the sorcerer, Acts 8, Paul rebuked Elimas a Jewish sorcerer and blinded him for a season, Acts 13. Peter's shadow healed, Acts 5, and Paul's handkerchiefs healed, Acts 19. Peter laid on hands, Acts 8, and Paul laid on hands, Acts 19. Peter raised Tabitha from the dead, Acts 9, and Paul raised Eutychus from the dead, Acts 20. Peter was worshipped, Acts 10, and Paul was worshipped, Acts 14. Paul last healed in Acts 28 verses 8 and 9. At the Jerusalem Council, Barnabas and Paul declared the miracles and wonders God had worked by them among the Gentiles, Acts 15 verse 12. Christ had informed Paul that by the time he reached Rome he would have revealed the entire mystery to Paul, Rom. 1529, Luke records how that God was justified in setting Israel aside. During Acts, Paul went throughout the Roman Empire notifying the Jews that God had changed programs. Paul informed the Jews in the synagogues and elsewhere that if an individual Jew wanted to be saved he needed to believe what we preach, Rom. 10,8 but after the Jews failed three times in three different places to receive the message Paul set them aside for the third and final time in Rome about AD 61, Acts 13 46, 18 colon 6, 28 colon 28. Paul then provoked them to jealousy by going to the Gentiles. 
the transition from Christ's ministry to Israel through the 12 little flock apostles, Peter's group, to Christ's ministry to his one apostle to the body of Christ, Paul's group, was completed in Acts 28 and sign gifts were no longer needed. Nothing new began in Acts 28, the transition ended. God began a new dispensation in Acts 9. Peter's message and Paul's overlapped between Acts 9 and Acts 15. The kingdom on earth has not been offered since the Jerusalem Council in Acts 15, Gal, 1 colon 6 9, 2 colon 7 9. Paul wrote down the rest of the mystery doctrine while on house arrest in Rome in his letters to the Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. 13 For what is it wherein ye were inferior to other churches, except it be that I myself was not burdensome to you? Forgive me this wrong. The church at Corinth began in the synagogue of the Jews who require a sign, Acts 18 verse 17, 1 Cor. 122, God gave sign gifts to get Christ's doctrine out to the body of Christ before it was written down. Paul cared for them as he did the other churches, except that he did not ask them for money, forgive me this wrong, sarcasm, dot. 14 Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you, for the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. Look, this is the third time that I am ready to visit you, and I will not be burdensome to you. I do not want what belongs to you, I want you. Paul's second visit was not recorded. He probably briefly left his ministry in Ephesus and came to them in heaviness and wants to avoid repeating that, 2 colon 1. He lovingly wants them to follow him for their own sake. He wants to bless them spiritually with more revelation. He wants to provide for their growth since he is their apostle and spiritual father and they are his spiritual children. Parents should provide for their children, not the other way around. 15 And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. 16 But be it so, I did not burden you, nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. And I will very gladly spend my energy on you, and be spent for you just like parents for their children. But the more I love you, it seems the less you love me in return. Let it be so, I never asked you for anything, but some still think I snared you with falsehood. 17 Did I make a gain of you by any of them whom I sent unto you? 18 I desired Titus, and with him I sent a brother. Did Titus make a gain of you? Walked we not in the same spirit? Walked we not in the same steps? Did any of the men I sent you ask for payment? I requested that Titus and a brother would go and help you. Did he not also promote Christ according to the revelation of the mystery given to me? Did not Titus and I walk in the same spirit, in the same steps, lovingly serving you for free with pure motives, and speaking the same sound doctrine, 1 Cor. 1 10, Phil. 3 16, 4 colon 9. 19 again, think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you? We speak before God in Christ, but we do all things, dearly beloved, for your edifying. Again, do you think we apologize for not asking you for money? We are speaking the truth before God in Christ. Our motive in all things we do dearly beloved is for your spiritual growth. Paul knows it is essential for them and us to follow what he wrote. 20 For I fear, lest, when I come, I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you such as you would not, lest there be debates, envyings, wraths, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, tumults, 21 And lest, when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and that I shall bewail many which have sinned already, and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed. I am fearful that when I come again to you I will not find you the way I would like, and that you will not find me the way you would like. Paul does not want to have to discipline the Corinthians in anger again, 1 Cor. For 21, Paul does not want those who sinned already and have not changed their minds about following false apostles to argue, debate, envy, have strife, talk bad, whisper behind his back, or for there to be a loud rebellious protest. I fear that when I come to you again that God will require me to bewail, to express sorrow and grief, many for their sin of following the false ministers instead of me, that they will not have changed their mind about the uncleanness of what they were doing, continuing to listen to false ministers and committing spiritual adultery by lusting, lasciviousness, after them which is a sin they have already committed.
Their fornication in this context is spiritual, not physical. Phil 3 colon 2 Paul warned those who already sinned by committing spiritual fornication for he knew that the future of the body of Christ depended on them believing the truth. Sound doctrine leads to sound thinking and right living, while false doctrine leads to wrong thinking and wrong behavior. They would have joy, freedom, and clarity if they followed him. There are many excellent rightly dividing Pauline Grace pastors and teachers on social media, so there is no reason to listen to those who teach Christ's earthly ministry instead of his heavenly ministry. Paul had the love and courage to deal with the problems in the church. During the Great Tribulation, Peter's group will say the Our Father prayer that Christ taught them, Matt. 6 6 13. The Son's atoning blood made his Father their Father in God. John 20 verse 17. They will desire their King and his kingdom to come. God will send the Jews who live in Judea and flee to the mountains, manna daily during the last half of the wrath. Those who are scattered around the world can knock on the doors of the Gentiles and be helped similarly as during World War II, Luke 11 verse 9. They will confess their national sins of idolatry and killing their Messiah. In that day before his second coming, the tribulation saints will admire God and believe that his will was carried out. In heaven when we were raptured, 2 Thess 1 10. The saints will need God's help and courage to be killed rather than to be tempted to take the mark of the beast, Revelation 13 verses 17 and 18. They look forward to God's glory in the eternal kingdom on earth when Christ takes possession of it, Genesis 14 verse 19, Revelation 19 verse 11. The Acts of the Apostles Commentary Part 1 page 112. His grace is sufficient for me.